товариш Сергей. The prototype has been constructed. In a couple of months it will be ready to fly. We have to do some tests and reinforce the wings. What do you mean two months? The project is today. We need two months to reinforce the wings, bled. We do not need the project today. So what you see here in front of you is the result of about a year of work, that being designing and building, and soon testing, of fixed wing autonomous drones. Which doesn't mean it's any good, mind you, and we're gonna get into that relatively soon. But first, a short presentation. This here in front is the battery compartment, which also houses the camera. This is supposed to fit a couple of lithium-ion packs, like those. These are also handmade. One in the front and one slightly behind of it. Anyway, here. We have the housing for the video transmitter, the uh, control receiver and the GPS and also if you look inside we're gonna see the Matek F722 flight controller. This is supposed to run all our uh, autonomous flying needs. This is also secured in place with two screws. The entire fuselage is made out of six large sections that are 3D printed vertically so the Z axis is either that way or that way for each piece printed. So this is the fourth section, second section, right here, third, fourth to about here, fifth and the little tail um, thing is the sixth section. The wings are cut from extruded styrofoam with a hot wire and the main spars are a combination of aluminium and wood. Why? Because the aluminium spars we could find in a local hardware store are actually just U shapes that go up to a length of a meter. So the aluminium spar is from here to about here. And from here on it's wood. Which is why you might notice an extreme amount of flex in the wings. These wings are not exactly supposed to flex up to half a meter up, but they do unfortunately. And that's why we've decided to add some rope here. So this is a mounting point for, the, for rope, which connects to those weird protrusions that you see on both sides of the fuselage. There's one here and there's one over here. They're basically hitch posts. The tail boom is carbon fiber, which might be the most expensive part of this airplane, if we don't count our time. And the tail surfaces are also hot wire cut extruded polystyrene. So this piece right here that holds the tail surfaces together is also 3D printed and even more, it's detachable for easy transport. So if we go here and unscrew these two bolts, it moves freely. You can take it off if needed. And we can also note that this piece also holds the tail wheel. It's a tail drag. Also, another note, those bolts don't go through the carbon fiber uh, tube. This is a friction fit here. If we take a look under the plane, you'll see this weird little housing here, which is supposed to mount one of those tiny little GoPro clones. In this case, an Econ H9 or something. And it's held together with a rubber band, which should really be tightened a bit more. The undercarriage was supposed to be flexible. It was supposed to have some sort of suspension. You can see those uh, steel rods here. Unfortunately, the plane was initially designed to have an all-up weight of 3 kilograms. It has an all-up weight of 4.4 right now. So, if we set this down, it's gonna dig its nose into the ground. And so there's a few zip ties here to hold the landing gear in place. Right, so remember when I said that it's not necessarily any good? Well, the wings were built about a year ago. That's relevant because we only learned how to do strength analysis on beams about 8 months ago at university. So these parts were, well, let's just say they were chosen using the eye as a gauge. Keep in mind that at that time the drone was only supposed to weigh about 3 kilograms. Anyway, let's do some math. The wingspan is 3000 millimeters and the cord is 200 millimeters. 
Let's assume that the main part takes about 75% of the load of the whole wing. Here's a diagram of what we're about to calculate. For the aluminium parts that we use, the maximum tensile strength is 250 megapascals. Here's the section of the main spar. Let's define a distributed force called F equal to 75% of the lift force divided by 2, that's because each wing takes half the load, and the length L equal to 10 mm. After establishing the diagrams and doing the calculations, we end up with a maximum supported lift force of 4.08 kg for the whole plane. This would have been borderline but workable for a 3 kg drone. Unfortunately, our drone is now 4.5 kg. That means that the maximum supported G number is less than 1. So the G-force being less than 1 means that the wings won't even hold up in level flight. They will break. So we have to redesign the wings, right? Well, not necessarily, because this is a small drone and the point of this project is not to figure out how much load those wings can take. We decided to add some stiffeners, and normally you would add stiffeners made out of aluminium or steel or something like that, maybe plastic. But because we're lazy and we wanted to get done with all of this, we added stiffeners made out of rope. <laughs> so we designed some attachment points for the rope, we tied it on, and we fully expected it to break at the second the plane took off. But did it? Let's find out, shall we? Busty! Mm. What do you think the chances of success are here? Whoa! Pretty high, my friend. Pretty high, give a number. Wow. Percentage. 90 divided by 3. 30%, okay. I was in the ballpark of the 25%. It's okay. Yes. What do you think? 3.6. Not great, not terrible. 3.6 is wrong, not great, not terrible. <laughs> That is what happens when you don't do spark calculation correctly. Right, well, it was fairly obvious that a crash would happen at some point. What was surprising is that not, not only did it fly for about 5 minutes with those ropes on, it flew relatively well. 
Unfortunately, the only two electronics that broke in that crash were a server which is still on the field somewhere, we didn't find it, and the micro SD card that held all the flight data. So, we're gonna do all of our flight analysis based on the DVR footage that we recorded on the ground, which is flaky but good enough for the job. The first bit of information that we can gather is the actual airspeed based on GPS ground speed. Doing this bit of math, we conclude that the top speed of this drone is about 67 km per hour in no wind. This result is confirmed by the historical wind data for our location, which was about 8 km per hour, so only about a km per hour difference. It's about what we expected given the really crappy 8x45 props that were intended for use in multi rotors, not uh, fixed wing RC planes, but good enough, I guess. It flew. Now let's analyze the flight envelope and stability. Knowing the wings could break at any moment, we purposefully tried to fly at very low G numbers and execute very gentle maneuvers. The drone kept climbing throughout the flight, reaching a maximum altitude of 487 meters in 265 seconds, giving an average climb rate of 1.83 meters per second. While trying to gain altitude by means of elevator input, we noticed a sustainable climb rate of about 2.5 meters per second at full power. Now about the power. Let's find a point in the flight where the amp draw is at a minimum, meaning the motors are shut off. Here, for example, we can read a cell voltage of 3.80 volts. Now, immediately after that, once the motors are fully powered again, we can read a current draw of 32.5 amps. We also know that the other electronics on board use about 1.1 amps of power. Using these formulas, we can calculate the power to weight ratio to be about 160 watts per kilogram. Considering the flight characteristics and climb rate of this aircraft, using a ratio lower than about 140 watts per kilogram would be unsuitable for high altitude missions, mainly because of time constraints, because you need to get up fairly quickly to not run out of batteries. Looking at what we could recover from the wreck, the cause of failure is exactly what we expected. The spars broke. It's interesting that the spars are bent down and back, this probably means that the failure occurred at the point where the wing has a negative angle of attack. Now let's talk about the building process. Initially the fuselage was built with a fairly classic approach, completely ignoring the fact that we are using a 3D printer. <laughs> Later in the design process we changed to a more suitable design for 3D printing. The wings were hot wire cut using nichrome wire with a home build tool and the main spars were made out of aluminium brought bought from the hardware store. We used Bison Polymax glue for sticking the spars to the styrofoam wings. We then covered the wings and fins in scotch tape, which was incredibly fun as you can imagine. The hinges for the control surfaces were made with uh, duct tape. We used cheap 17 gram servos, homemade lithium ion packs and an FR Sky radio setup. Fortunately at the time of building we still had access to Mechatronic Slab Bucharest, where most of this footage that you see here was filmed. Having a relatively large workspace is vital for working with large wings, obviously. After that wonderful lockdown happened, which is still going on today, we had to move to a friend's shed and later on to my home here, 300 kilometers away from where we initially began the project. So finally, after about a year of work and a huge amount of learning, it was fun but tiring and boring by the end, we can conclude this project and move on to an even bigger one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.